warning. No transportation, no medical care. The financial system would be down. It's happened before. Will it happen again? It would uh, collapse electric grids, not just in the United States, but across the entire planet. This is the main thing that we want to touch on, actually. December 12th, 2012. There's been a lot of theories. There have been a lot of speculations, you know, about what this particular day. Some say this is the day of the Lord. You understand? Know Everyone is talking about the last days and the last day and, and the end of time and, and it's the end of the world. But what, does, what do these ideas really mean? Recently, Pat Robinson on his 700 Club, he had a very interesting um, segment that he presented on the dark day, and it kind of matches something that some of us have been having kind of visions on, what this kind of dark day, what is the, the most, the most um, unpredictable but, but crippling effect that a global a global blackout like what does it mean by dark day so the key is right here is the word dark day right dark day all right so we have day first of all what is a day how do we define a day all right true it's the day of the lord so if we're speaking about the lord the true yahweh or yod hey wow hey we need to look at it scripturally based on the programming or prophetic software, which is the B-I-B-L-E, which is the Bible. Now, if we're speaking about just a day, based on what definition of day? The Bible says there's 12 hours in the day and there's 12 hours in the night. But now in the present world or the present society, we say there's uh, 24 hours, but then... Scripturally speaking, the day of the Lord, you understand, is, uh, is different in, quote, time than the so-called 24-hour Greenwich time or than the Hebrew 12 hours in a day biblical time. So when we look at December 12, 2012, what is it? Nostradamus quatrains say one thing. Nostradamus, they found some secret text, allegedly, which speaks about 2012 and, and the end of the cycle and the end of the world, so forth and so on. We have a lot of Mayan so-called speculations and the Baktun, the 13th Baktun and the end of time and a great uh, fifth cycle, so forth and so on. But then scripturally, biblically, this gets a little bit confounded, is what the Mayans are speaking about, the same thing as what the Hebrews were speaking about? Is this the same thing as Nostradamus, so-called lost text or lost scroll, lost book or whatever that they found recently? Is this the same thing? Now, check out um, Pat Robinson's uh, 700 Club for a moment, and we're going to come back and get into a little bit more of this. So, Stay tuned. Check this out. The sun. Scientists warn there's a dangerous side to the hypnotic glow of the aurora borealis or northern lights. You know, we have an interesting little planet. Uh, there was a television series called The Third One. 
Rock from the Sun. Um, we're Uncle Rock and molten uh, lava uh, that uh, orbits around the sun. The sun is a great big ball of fire. It's like one continuous hydrogen explosion going on all the time, enormous heat. And every so often it sends out flare. We just had one of those flares uh, a week or so ago. Big, uh, horrible solar flare. It didn't cause the damage that was anticipated. No decided, but it could. And if the sun decides it wants to get on a rampage and start sending out some of those flares, uh, it can affect the uh, Earth in a tremendous way. And uh, it takes about 90 seconds to uh, wipe out the electrical grid we've got, the satellites in orbit, the things that we rely on for our lights, our power, our communications, our telephones, our air travel, all that. It can happen just like that. Now, we've never had that kind of a situation because we haven't been that way, but there has been in the past a solar storm of the magnitude that would have done it to us. The thing that is a century or so ago, we weren't as sophisticated as we are now. But now we are, and now we are dependent on these things. We talked earlier about money. Your money would be gone if they, if they wipe out the computers. Yeah. I mean, you, you, your stocks, your bonds, gone, gone. Unless they have some kind of a, 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 a print back up, and many of them don't. Well, look at this report from Mark Martin. Uh, the cause behind it is something we can't control. The sun. Scientists warn there's a dangerous side to the hypnotic glow of the aurora borealis or northern lights especially if this colorful display shows up in more southerly locations. It was just so bright that you could read newspapers at night by the, the, the glow of the aurora borealis. That happened in 1859, according to Dr. Peter Pry. The so-called northern lights could be seen from the equator, a sign of an extraordinarily powerful solar or geomagnetic storm. Scientists named it the Carrington Event, after Richard Carrington, a British amateur astronomer who observed a white light flare on the sun. A big solar flare today is known as a coronal mass ejection, or CME. There's more energy concentrated in this one spot than there is someplace else, and it's enough to breach the gravity field. Large flares have escaped the gravity field of the sun several times this year already, including the strong solar storm that drew so much attention in early March. The solar wind carries the large violent ejection of charged particles toward the Earth at speeds of more than 4 million miles per hour. The resulting collision with the Earth's magnetic field produces a geomagnetic storm. In 1859, the solar superstorm disrupted the world's telegraph system, even causing fires at some telegraph stations. In today's technology-driven world, an extreme radiation blast like that could disrupt spacecraft, satellites, GPS, airplane flights, and power grids. When you're dealing with currents large enough to create problems even for a simple telegraph network, that raises concerns for modern equipment. And in this case, it's really the transformers, these big, very difficult to replace transformers that are the concern. If an 1859 Carrington event happened today, you know, it would uh, collapse electric grids, not just in the United States, but across the entire planet. Doctors Pry and Schnur say that would mean catastrophic consequences. Without the electric grid, well, of course, there's no power. There's also no water. There's also no communications, no transportation, no medical care. The financial system would be down. The environmental effects would be catastrophic at a level that we've never seen before. So what is the solution? How do we protect ourselves from a catastrophe in the event another solar superstorm would strike the Earth, like the one in 1859 did? Should we build more hardware on the ground to block the impact, or should there be greater forecasting techniques? The answer depends on who you ask. Right now, uh, here in the space of the laboratory, Dr. Antti Polkinen is a solar scientist at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Scientists here develop state-of-the-art space weather forecasting techniques so we know when a solar Katrina is heading our way. We have seen uh, quite, uh, quite an increase in, in, in terms of solar activity over the past couple of years, exactly because of this approaching solar maximum. Roughly every 11 years, the sun enters the solar maximum.
maximum phase. Scientists believe the next one will begin at the end of this year and last through 2013. I think it's without a question that we are becoming more and more vulnerable uh, to space weather. So uh, this increasing understanding and the capability uh, to forecast space weather is just very timely right now. Other scientists say while cutting-edge research and forecasting are important, steps can be taken right now to fortify the electric grid. There are series, something called series capacitance, which can be built into the grid. This, in fact, was done in Quebec. In 1989, a severe solar storm took only 90 seconds to wipe out power across the entire Quebec province. It took up to two weeks to turn all the lights back on. Power industry leaders then took steps to protect the grid from dangerous electromagnetic pulses. Schnur says a more modern version of that protection could be built into grids today at a reasonable cost. One example, new prototypes of so-called current blockers. Pry agrees. There are other, other things called surge arresters that can stop it. You can do things like build Faraday cages around transformers. A Faraday cage is just basically a metal box. And it prevents, uh, you know, the, the pulse gets short-circuited. Scientists like Pry and Schnur believe the research shows that solar superstorms could be apocalyptic. However, the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, or NERC, disagrees. It recently found that the most likely result from a severe solar storm would be the loss of reactive power. That might then lead to voltage instability, not the failure of a large number of transformers. Scientists believe restoring power after a voltage collapse would only take hours or days, while replacing transformers could leave people in the dark for months, even years. Pry calls the NERC report junk science. It says it puts the lives of millions in danger. Mark Lobby of NERC stands by the report. The results from the report are very open. Uh, anybody can get the open source code. They can look at the results in the report, and uh, they can give us their views. Scientists and engineers disagree on the magnitude of the impact of solar superstorms. Those that believe the consequences can be catastrophic hope protective measures are put in place before it's too late. Mark Martin, CBN News, Washington, D.C. and Greenbelt, Maryland. Great report, Mark. You know, with just a Mayan uh, forecast, <clears throat> that, uh, they forecast an eight-year, uh, 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 eight, 800-year cycle, I guess it is, uh, and, and they've got one coming up on, what is it, December the 21st. Is it the 21st or the 23rd, something like that? Yeah, of, of, of this year. Yeah. This year. Interesting. And when they, they claim the planets, uh, how they figure this one out, I don't know, but they did figure it out. I don't know if they're accurate, but uh, they claim that uh, in our solar system that the planets are going to all align and it'll be an unusual uh, magnetic pull. And if all the planets line up with the sun and everything starts pulling on us, it could be a, uh, but I don't know whether there's any validity to it or not, but the Mayans put a great deal of uh, uh, faith in it in those days, but it was, uh, it's an eight. I want to say it's 800 year, 80 year, 80 year. I'm trying to think how many years it is, but it's a long time. Uh, a cycle of when these things happen, and uh, uh, but it, it, it could coincide. But this is going to be an unusual year. And if we have a solar solar flare, um, I'm not much for doomsday, but I sure do have a big generator in my house. I have two of them. I don't want to hear what I want about. That's a quiet warning. <laughs> <laughs> Generators are so cheap. Well, do you think they're cheap? Yeah, they're cheap. I mean, comparatively, they don't cost that much money. I guess if you didn't have power, they'd be. Worth they'd be you better believe they'd be worth every penny. You've got to have a little source of some fuel for them. But, uh, uh, hey, why not? Be prepared, right? Yeah, get my guns and get my bunker. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you didn't hear that here. No, no nobody <laughs> these right lines into that stuff. You know, these, these dumb state folks, but I, I do think of uh, generators. No practical things. We, we have, we have storms cool. here that knock out power yeah. Yeah, up in the, in the hills and the mountains. You have uh, storms that uh, knock down trees. The trees, in terms, knock down power lines, and you don't have power. So. It's all the, the repercussions that sometimes you don't think of ahead of time as a result of that that I think would really be damaging. In the old days, Terry, we had wood stoves, wood fires. Uh, you know, 
we had our own vegetable gardens, we had our own meat source, we had everything mm -hmm. self-sufficient. Now, there was a book written called The Brittle Society, and we are brittle because we are so interdependent now. That makes us very efficient because we had such specialization of tasks. But at the same time, once this thing breaks down, it leaves you in a, in a, in a mess. But you know, in the old days, you had a pump. And you pumped your water, you did that down there. And you weren't depending on, on, on a power pump, it was your arm. You yeah. pumped the thing and you got or water. Any system or any other system. Yeah, you, you had a well. And uh, you had your pigs and hogs and you had chickens. And I'm a little farm man. Yeah, I can see that. All right. yeah. City boy now, though. That's so. right. Back You're to, vulnerable back to the nature. All right. Well, up next. When the stripper started dancing, she took off more than her clothes. I was so wounded, and I was so desperately hurting. For a man to give me a dollar to strip on a pole was actually more than I felt I was really worth. How she found her true worth when we come back.